Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today is our second video of the Foundry in Action series, and we're gonna be diving into the data monitoring health checks for our data sets. And uh, data sets, if you watched the previous video, we created data sets using code repositories uh, via data pipelines that are built in PySpark. And today we're gonna look at how we can monitor the health of those pipelines using Foundry's built-in monitoring tools. And it's really cool, every output data set gets a dashboard for these um, health checks and you can customize it and add the checks you want or remove checks you don't want. You can add uh, different alerts and alert levels, um, which is really cool. Control severity, uh, which is also really important. A lot of people take for granted um, you know, how hard it is to create a decent alerting system. And based on what I've seen so far, the tools encompass basically every use case you're gonna have. Uh, and having all of this again out of box with the full historical builds um, and analysis capabilities to see the history of how this check was failing is awesome. So get ready people for data health monitoring inside of Foundry. All right, this is live and unscripted. I'm just gonna start messing around and see um, what I can find in there. Um, here's the airlines data set we created in our previous video, video using code repositories in PySpark. And um, I'm gonna come in here and the health checks are all found under this health tab. Um, there's also some cool stuff in here related to data sets where you can see the history of builds coming off master, which is really cool. Um, you can see some additional details about um, how the set is built, um, which I also find you know fairly valuable. Um, I think there's a resource usage metric as well. Yeah, so this is really cool in case you're, you wanna break down um, how your resources are being consumed. Um, but let's jump into the health checks tab and we can see we have a moderate um, check that has failed and we see that one down here this is telling you um, this is about a schema expectation i believe it is looking for schema changes which isn't a super big deal and then if we come back up here we can see that uh, there has been a build check status um, that's been added we can see the history of that um, build uh, over time if we go into the edit tab, we can see um, how we can configure the options for that build status uh, check. And um, if you want to, you could escalate to critical after however many number of consecutive builds. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to say if it's more than three failures, so let's figure out what's going on. Let's go ahead and um, automatically create an issue uh, if that fails. We'll assign it to, uh, let's go ahead and just assign it to me so I'm not spamming people automatically close the issue when the build uh, passes and map alert severities to issue priorities right this is pretty cool so a moderate alert will go to a medium priority and a critical to a high it's really overlooked how important it is to get your priorities right because if you screw this up what will happen is every it just becomes noise developers will ignore the issues if everything's a critical right so like critical needs to mean something it means like absolutely drop everything this is a crisis right like it, we have to get production back into a stable state maybe that maybe it's maybe it's even more critical to you know if critical might even mean to be something even more severe for your organization um, but the ability to properly use this this feature here is really really important in my opinion to get developers to actually pay attention to what's coming out of here uh, so let's go ahead and save that and we're going to go ahead and um, look at adding uh, or look at some of these other options um, this one is a time-based check. It's basically saying, um, you know, if this thing has been, if it, the, the data set hasn't been built after a certain period of time, alert me about it. And then let's go and um, take a look at adding some new ones. So here are the categories. You got status checks, time-based checks, size checks, content checks, and schema checks. This is pretty cool. I wonder what I can do under content. Add column, allowed column values, approximate correlation. Oh, that's cool. Oh, percent null. That's cool. Numeric mean. That's pretty cool. Um, we'll add a primary check, 100%. Unique. Let's do that and non null. Uh, this check passes when the primary key composed of columns select a column. Does anyone remember what our primary key is in this table? I do not remember. Code description, average departure date. Let's check. Um, hmm. Number of aircraft. I wonder why there is. Let's check code. Let's just see if that is is one hundred percent unique and not null. Escalate to critical after three failures, and let's make this a low, like a moderate severity level. And there we go. 
And I don't know where I can add severity, so I'll, I'll try and find that next and um, say, this is just a demo check. And then let's also create uh, an, um, uh, an issue automatically out of this check and let's map the severities again. And um, let's see here, I must be missing like a required and I'll change the columns of this just once it's saved. And oh, there's another check with the same columns. All right, so it looks like I'm I'm adding a redundant check. So let's delete that and let's go with um, total flights, number of aircraft, total capacity in pounds, maybe. Uh, Hmm, I know this is probably going to alert, so <laughs> it's probably a good one to check. Let's go ahead and, and try that. All right, and let's see where it came, where it added it. Um, content, all right, so I have my content check, and this should fail, I'm guessing, because I, I don't expect um, total capacity in pounds to be unique, and it's probably gonna be null in a lot of cases. And, um, Oh, and here's the one that was existing for content. So there was a primary key check on code already, and that's why um, it was giving me that error. So let's go ahead and just force a build and see if we can trigger a failure. And you can check like the progress of your builds in here too. So um, you can jump in and it'll start um, showing you the status of everything that's going on within the application. And let's see, progress details, here we go. Okay, cool. Looks like we can um, toggle some additional detail on the Gantt chart. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, my build succeeded. So let's go back and check um, the health checks and see if any of these have failed. Oh, look, our, uh, our capacity in pounds did pass. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I thought for sure um, some of those would be null and they would be um, non-unique. So um, Colin, unique. all right, cool. And uh, let's see what else we've got in here. Let's check a, um, let's see these status ones. Let's see job status, most recent job run on a data set succeeded or failed, sync status check with them. Ah, that's kind of boring. What are the size checks about? Data file count, partition set, row count, transaction file count. This could be good. Let's maybe say um, if, for some reason we're getting no data, um, that could be a problem, right? So check whether the total number of rows is less than um, or equal to, let's say, um, let's just say one. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, and it's greater than or equal to, um, let's see. Well, I don't really care about it. It's great. There's gonna be a huge um, data set, so I don't really wanna do that is at most deviations away from the median. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder how it does that. Approximate standard deviation away from the median. What is the median? The median is calculated from the last 10 check results. I don't have 10 check results on this thing, do I? I'm not sure. Um, that actually would be a cool check. Is, it, is at most one standard deviation um, away from the median? Let's try that. Testing. Row count check. And we're not going to automatically create it. Well, actually, yeah, that probably would be. Now nah, let's not create another one. Uh, let's go ahead and just save this check. And um, I'm really curious how, if what the row count median is exact uh, right now. So we have, what was this one? This one someone else put in here transaction file size count. All right, and so we added our row count check and let's go ahead and um, again, let's force another build. And we are gonna have to force it and let's see what this thing ends up coming back with. All right, looks like that build succeeded. I'm just gonna go back and verify the checks um, are there. And let's see, testing row count. Um, I don't know if this is being triggered. It's weird, it's not giving me not compute the median deviation. I knew that was going to happen. That's kind of a bummer, man. 
Yeah, these could not compute the median deviation. It's fewer than 10 builds. Yeah, so like that's kind of a bummer, but this is a really cool feature um, that you could take advantage of. That And row count is pretty useful as a metric. Like I remember a lot of times we would use that metric when um, there would be issues, especially in like streaming data, like when we were expecting a certain amount of um, input records per day, and then that would like suddenly drop off to some ridiculous number, like we're down 20% or we're down 30%. That usually would point to some kind of problem uh, that was introduced by one of the backing services, like maybe a stream shut down or something like that. So this could be like a really useful metric uh, in for sure. Like I, I really value that one a lot. Um, and all of the standard content ones are there. Um, oh, that's cool. You can should do some column checks too against the schema. I probably would be putting those checks like I showed in the code repositories inside unit tests. But um, this could be useful if you're not using code repositories for sure. You could add the same kind of assertions that we added in our unit tests um, in here, which is cool. And, and I am going to get to Contour uh, soon. Um, what's cool, Contour lets you analyze these large data sets um, with just standard visualization tools. And you can create the data sets you monitor here, right? So like in Contour, instead of using code repositories, you can use Contour to create your output data sets and do a lot of the same thing. And what's cool about Contour is it uses this ultra performance Spark environment, which is pretty damn cool. Um, I can't tell you how they do that, but they have this like ultra performance Spark environment that's built on the Contour. So you can uh, create these um, uh, data sets and also uh, reports and dashboards in Contour um, extremely fast on large data sets, which is really cool. Uh, so look out for Contour. This is going to, Contour is going to be the basis of our um, Foundry for Gaming application. So I'm not going to build a code repository. And just a heads up, like what is Foundry for Gaming? It is the sample app I'm going to build on top of Foundry with a friend of mine who started a gaming framework called the Game Plumbing Framework. And it's a, it's an, um, a framework for Unity games. And it's actually agnostic, the messaging system and uh, telemetry streaming system is the server that backs that is agnostic to the gaming framework, but we're gonna build it on top of a Unity game, which is just a simple rock, paper, scissors game. And we're gonna stream telemetry data into Foundry. And I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna build the reporting systems and data sets in Contour. And I'm gonna show you how you can then export those features for other people to use, which will be the subject of another video, uh, which is pretty cool. So what are the takeaways? The biggest takeaway is that Palantir knows how to operationalize big data, right? They have thought of everything, essentially. You've only seen two, two features in Foundry so far. You've only seen the data sets, which we just saw how to set up alerts for, and the code repositories. <laughs> you haven't even seen everything else that's under the hood here. Um, but every feature they've designed is clearly informed by best practice, by um, years of experience and knowing how to operationalize this stuff, right? Like a lot of platforms expect you to piece together all of the various tools to create an operational platform. Foundry has them all. And in upcoming videos, we are gonna be building an app, which will be Foundry for Gaming. And I can't wait to show you the rest of these features. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna use Contour to build the telemetry system uh, that'll do all of the reporting on our gaming telemetry. And that can be used to power A-B testing, which is gonna be really cool. A-B testing is the lifeblood of gaming platforms. Um, and they're, it really drives like when you find who the power users are, how you can um, you know keep people engaged with your game and deliver a better user experience. So we're gonna build something similar to that and try to see how we can leverage Foundry. And there's a feature in Foundry you're gonna learn about soon that's gonna blow your mind because those types of projects can actually be shared. So get ready people for the next video.